What up, y'all? This is your boy, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Tuesday, December 1st, 2015, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at the Enter Report or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app. Search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Batman is knocked out and locked up, but Superman doesn't seem all that eager to rescue him in the brand new teaser for Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice. The latest footage sees Ben Affleck's Bruce Wayne waking up in chains alongside other masked men. Henry Cavill's Clark Kent, dressed in his Superman garbs, jump into the scene, but rather than free the man who should be fine by his side, he just unmasks him, staring at the Batmask in disgust. The nearly, the nearly minute-long footage is a preview for another full-length trailer from the Zack Snyder director the DC superhero drama, which will drop on Wednesday. It premiered during Monday's episode of Gotham on Fox, which also features DC comic characters Batman Bruce Wayne, James Gordon, Mercedes Fish Mooney, and the Penguin. Batman vs. Superman also stars Gil Gadot as Wonder Woman, Amy Adams as Lois Lane, and Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. It will be released on March 25, 2016. Captain America Civil War is raking in a huge amount of views. The trailer for the superhero crossover movie racked up 61 million global views in 24 hours. In 24 hours, the largest number for a debut trailer, Marvel announced Monday. As a way of comparison, the first teaser trailer for Star Wars The Force Awakens was the previous record holder with 55 million views. The second trailer for Star Wars The Force Awakens trailer garnered 112 million views in the first 24 hours in October. The Captain America Civil War trailer also marks the most viewed trailer for a Marvel film, the studio said. It almost doubled the preview, the previous record breaker, Avengers Age of Ultron trailer, which debuted with 34 million views in 2014. The Civil War trailer will inter- was introduced by Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans during an appearance on Jimmy Kimmel Live last Tuesday night. Captain America Civil War is due out in theaters May 6 of 2016. Director Peter Jackson has taken to social media in order to tease potentially directing future episodes of the BBC's long-running sci-fi series, Doctor Who. Posted to Jackson's Facebook Sunday, the comedic video features the Lord of the Rings director polishing his four Oscar awards while chatting with his daughter Katie about how Doctor Who showrunner Stephen Moffat continually begged him to start directing the show. Jackson says before the doctor himself, Peter Capaldi, appears with the contract from the BBC for the Oscar winner to sign, He's always emailing me. Who are you exactly? Jackson asked before warning his daughter about Doctor Who fans, who are a little more intense than Tolkien fans. Peter Capaldi responds in character, I'm the Doctor. Jackson asks who? Correct. Capaldi answers. Before Jackson can decide, a deadly um, delicate chases off Capaldi, leaving the Oscar winner and Katie free to watch The Walking Dead. Jackson captioned, this was an interesting weekend. Earlier this month, Moffat stated his desire for Jackson to direct the show, mentioning that he's a genuine big old Doctor Who fan. He's mentioned um, directing an episode, and then we emailed him and doesn't reply. CBS has ordered seven more episodes of its new superhero drama Supergirl, upgrading the series to its first full season. As reported by Deadline, Supergirl will now run for 20 episodes during its freshman season. Normally, a full season would consist of 22 episodes, but CBS is still referring to the upgrade as a full season order. The series' initial 13-episode run has received positive reviews from critics and average 11.24 million views for the network, along with a 2.8 rating among adults ages 18 to 49 most recent re- ratings. Supergirl premiered strong in October with 13 million viewers for a 3.1 rating and stars Melissa uh, Benoist as Superman's cousin Kara Danvers as she embraces her lineage and begins using her powers for good as Supergirl. Earlier this month, actress Jenna Dillwyn Tatum previewed her role on the dramas Lucy Lane and how her character developed a friendship with Kara. 
Star Wars creator George Lucas sees his separation from his beloved franchise as a divorce, but deemed it's a necessary one. Lucas told the Washington Post, I call it like a divorce. There's no such thing as working over someone's shoulder. You're either, di- you're either the dictator or you're not. And to do that would never work. So I said, I'm going to get a divorce. I knew that I couldn't be involved. All I do is make them miserable. I'd make myself miserable. I would probably ruin a vision. J.J. Abrams has a vision, and it is his vision. Lucas directed four of the installments, including the original Star Wars, as well as The Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the Sith. Richard Monacrad directed one. Irving Keschner helmed another, but Lucas was always involved in one way or another until The Force Awakens. Previously, Lucas told Vanity Fair that you can go to make a movie and all you do is get criticized and people try to make decisions about what you're going to do before you do it. You know, it's not much fun. Lucas will now watch the film starring Daisy Ridley and John Boyega as a civilian. His name does not even appear on the credits. Lucas says, again, using nuptials as a metaphor, now I'm faced with this awkward reality, which is fine. I got to go to the wedding. My ex will be there. My new wife will be there. But I'm going to have to take a very deep breath and be a good person and sit through it and just enjoy the moment because it is what it is. And it's a conscious decision that I made. Um, Yet he looks forward to watching Star Wars, The Force Awakens. He added, I never get to see the spaceship come over in 1977. I never got that experience that everyone else got to have. I never got to see Star Wars. So this time I'm going to. Star Wars The Force Awakens hits theaters on December 18th. Khloe Kardashian visited his strange husband Lamar Odom on Friday just days after announcing she is recovering from a strep infection. The 31-year-old reality star was spotted outside Cedar sinai Medical Center where the 36-year-old former NBA player remains hospitalized. The sighting marked Kardashian's first visit since contracting a strep infection this month. Kardashian gave an update on her health last week, telling fans she's doing better and no longer under quarantine. The star was well enough to spend Thanksgiving with her family and reflected on her year in a recent blog. She wrote, this year I have a deeper insight and possibly a deeper perspective now. I pride myself as someone who does live in the moment and as someone who shows gratitude in every corner. And I have been blessed this year with me getting another layer of what I am thankful for. She also shared, this year I'm overly thankful for my family. We find a way to always persevere, rise above the ashes without my crazy, chaotic, amazing family. I'm not sure how I could have gone through some of the things that I was tested with this year. Kardashian Odom called off their divorce after the former NBA player was discovered unconscious on October 13th, but the star later clarified they are not romantically involved. She explained her relationship with Odom and boyfriend James Harden on the Ellen DeGeneres show this month. And in a related story, Kylie Jenner recently discussed her changed relationship with dad, Caitlyn Jenner. The 18-year-old reality star opened up about the 66-year-old Olympic gold medalist on Monday's episode of the Ellen DeGeneres show. Caitlyn Jenner revealed she is transgender in April and has since begun living publicly as a woman. Jenner told the generous, I like her better than Bruce. We talk about makeup and clothes and we bond a lot more. Not only that, but I feel like there's not a huge secret in the family. It was never talked about. She also added, I feel like we're hanging out a lot more. There's no secrets, and she's really living her authentic, true self. I think that's awesome. She's the same exact person. She just looks different. Kaylin Jenner is also the parent of 20-year-old Kendall Jenner with ex-wife Kris Jenner and four other children from a previous marriage. In addition, she was stepfather to Kris Jenner's four children by Robert Kardashian, Courtney, Kim, Chloe and Rob Kardashian. Kim Kardashian wrote of the change of on her website in September. Is it weird for me? Yes, this person has been my stepdad for half of my life. But life is just about being happy. That's the one common denominator that everyone can understand. If you are able to be you, who can you be? Jenner also discussed her relationship with boyfriend Tiga in the interview, telling Jenner she and the 26-year-old rapper are still together. She, Tiga, Caitlyn Jenner, and Kris Jenner spent Thanksgiving together with the reunited with the reunited Kourtney Kardashian and ex-boyfriend Scott Disick. Los Angeles Laker icon Kobe Bryant announced Sunday that he will retire after the 2015-2016 season. Bryant, who's 37, has struggled with injuries the past three seasons. 
player who has won five NBA titles is averaging just 15.7 points and shooting just 31.5% from the field this season. Brian has a career scoring average of 25.3 and twice led the NBA in scoring. In a post on the Players Tribune website, Brian wrote, This season is all I have left to give. My heart can't take the pounding. My mind can handle the grind. But my body knows it's time to say goodbye. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver said in a statement, With 17 NBA All-Star selections and an MVP, uh, NBA MVP, five NBA championships with the Lakers, two Olympic gold medals, and a relentless worth ethic, Kobe Bryant is one of the greatest players in the history of our game. Whether competing in the finals or hoisting jump shots after midnight in an empty gym, Kobe has an unconditional love for the game. Uh, he also added, I joined Kobe's millions of fans around the world in congratulating him on an outstanding NBA career and thank him for so many thrilling memories. Olivia Cupo and boyfriend Tim Tebow have reportedly split. The 23-year-old Miss Universe 2012 winner and 28-year-old NFL free agent have been dating since September. Sources told the New York Daily News Cupo initiated the breakup due to frustrations over Tebow's abstinence vow. An insider said she had to break up with him because she just couldn't handle it. He still hits her up, but she just can't deal with the sex thing. He's pretty adamant about it, I guess. Tebow, who has played with the Denver Broncos and the New York Jets is well known for his devout Christian beliefs. He famously told Clay Traver- Travis on AOL's fanhouse.com he was, quote, saving himself for marriage at the at, at an SC, SEC media day in 2009. Source told E! News of the split, they're not seeing each other anymore, but are still friends. Different insider insisted Tebow's vow had nothing to do with the breakup. Copo previously dated singer Nick Jonas, who also maintained a vow of abstinence for many years. She has appeared on Extra, Good Work, and Secrets of New York Fashion Week since winning Miss Universe in December 2012. Lindsey Vaughn still has feelings for ex-boyfriend Tiger Woods. The 31-year-old Alpine ski racer admits as much in an interview on Friday's episode of CNN's Alpine Edge. The confession came nearly seven months after Vaughn and Woods split after three years of dating. The Olympic gold medalist said, I mean, I love him and I still love him. I had an amazing three years with him. Sometimes things just don't work out and unfortunately it didn't work out for us. But I don't have any regrets and I think we're both in a pretty good place. She also added, I don't think if I'm ready to be, I don't think if I'm ready to be in another relationship. I kind of realized that probably realistically I only have three good years of racing left. It's kind of nice to be able to just focus on that and focus on my career. Vaughn and Woods announced their breakup in May, citing their busy schedules as the reason for the split. The Alpine ski racer told the New York Times she learned a lot from the relationship in an interview this month. She said, I love Tiger, and I have an amazing three years with him. But it was a learning experience as well. With every relationship, you learn what you need and what you want in a partner. Vaughn was married to Alpine ski racer Thomas Vaughn from 2007 to 2011 and finalized her divorce in 2013. Woods, meanwhile, was wed to Eileen uh, Nordengren from 2004 to 2010 and shared eight-year-old daughter Sam and six-year-old son Charlie with the model. Bendy Irwin celebrated Thanksgiving with boyfriend Chandler Powell for the first time Thursday. The 17-year-old Australian conservationist uh, shared a photo from her holiday meal with the 19-year-old American weight border Sunday on Instagram. Erwin and Powell first met in 2013 and made their red carpet debut as a couple in September. She wrote, This is the face of joy after getting the right end of a wishbone for the first time on Thanksgiving and being granted one wonderful wish. Honestly, I owe only ever wish for more, hap- more time and happiness with my beautiful family. Thankful for food on the table and such gorgeous, genuine people in my life. She also added, spending Thanksgiving in America was a blessing, but I really believe we should count our blessings each and every day, at every meal, at moment with those that we love. Please pardon my feet in this picture, three months of dancing, and they look a little interesting. I assure you, they are getting better. Erwin and professional dancer Derek Hugh won season 21 of ABC's reality competition, Dancing with the Stars, just two days prior to Thanksgiving. The teenager returned to her home country Monday, thanking reporters for their congratulations on her win. Erwin told People Mag on her long-distance relationship with Powell in September. We talked every day and are together every two to three months. Thankfully, I've found someone who is 
an outdoors kind of person will have will go have adventures or picnics in the park. She told later on Entertainment Tonight, I am one of those old fashioned people and I love to write. So I write to Powell a lot, like hand write, write, written letters. I write lots and lots of letter, uh, letters. Irwin is the daughter of Terry Irwin and the late crocodile hunter Steve Irwin and sister to 11 year old uh, Robert Irwin. She appeared on Bendy, the Jungle Girl, and hosts Bendy's boot camp prior to competing on Dancing with the Stars. Gigi Hadid and rumor Bo Zan Malik appeared, con- uh, appeared to confirm their relationship Saturday. The 20 year old American model and 22 year old English singer were spotted holding hands as they left the Nice Guy restaurant in West Hollywood. The pair sparked speculations earlier in the week after they were seen together at the American Music Awards after party. The sighting seems to cause Hadid's ex boyfriend, singer Joe Jonas, to purge the model and Malik from his social media accounts. Jonas unfollowed Hadid and Malik on Twitter and also deleted a photo a photo with the former One Direction member on Instagram. Malik had picked up Hadid from an AMA's after party at the Nice Guy on November 22nd and the and the pair was spotted at the restaurant again two days later. Sources told E! News at the time the model and the singer couldn't keep their hands off each other. Uh, an eyewitness revealed they were holding hands under the table, whispering in each other's ears, and Zane was holding Gigi's leg. Gigi was so attached to him that she even followed Zane outside the, to the patio during a smoke break. Hadid split from Jonas earlier this month, reportedly in part because of their busy schedules. Malik, meanwhile, ended his engagement to Perry Edwards in August, four months after he left One Direction. Hadid is the daughter of Mohammed Hadid and the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star Yolanda Foster. She is known for her model work with guests and walked in the Victoria's Secret's fashion show for the first month with friend Kendall Jenner last month. Christopher McCary is ready to accept another Mission Impossible. The writer-director who helmed this year's Rogue Nation broke the news on Twitter that he'll be returning for the sixth installment. Sources tell The Hollywood Reporter that McCary will write, direct, and produce. McCary simply wrote Mission Accepted, hashtag M16. Uh, excuse me, MI6 on Twitter. Tom Cruise will reprise his lead role as Ethan Hunt in the Paramount and Skydance film. Cruise will also produce with Bad Robots J.J. Abrams and Skydance's David Ellison and Dana Goldberg. Rogue Nation was co-written and directed by, by McCrary. It earned $682.3 million worldwide to date. McCurry previously wrote the scripts for 2014 Edge of Tomorrow and 2013's Jack the Giant Slayer. He also wrote and directed 2012's Jack Reacher, also starring Tom Cruise. Comedian Amy Schumer has posted semi-nude for the 2016 Pirelli calendar. The train wreck star was photographed in a pair of panties and high heels by famed photographer Annie Leibovitz for the prestigious calendar which this year celebrates strong women. Others who appeared in this year's Pirelli calendar, uh, calendar include tennis great Serena Williams, Selma director Ava DuVernay, du- and Yoko Ono. Williams went topless for the shoot, but the other women were all clothed. Train Rex, Schumer's featured film debut, which she also wrote, had its gross and impressive $139 million globally since it debuted in July. Schumer tweeted along with the photo, which shows off Schumer's body without any touch-ups or editing. Beautiful, gross, strong, thin, fat, pretty, ugly, sexy, disgusting, flawless woman. Thank you at Annie Leibovitz. Rachel Nichols is leaving CNN and returning to ESPN. CNN confirmed to the wrap on Monday. The former ESPN reporter will anchor her own program for the Sports Network as well as report for Sports Center and other programs according to Sports Illustrated. She'll begin in early 2016. Nichols left ESPN for CNN in 2013 and hosted her own program, Unguarded, until it was canceled along with several other shows as part of widespread layoffs and cancellations in 2014. For the remainder of her time at CNN Nichols reported across the network's platforms on big sports stories, including the the Deflate Gate controversy with, with Tom Brady and the Ray Rice domestic abuse controversy. Her return to ESPN comes as the network has lost over 3 million subscribers since last year, causing a drop in Disney stock. 
AOC family has renewed the Fosters for a fourth season, the rap has learned. The series is currently on hiatus and will return with the season three winter premiere on Monday, January 25th. ABC family will rebrand itself as Freeform in January 2016. Jennifer Lopez served as executive producer on the series from Bradley Bregweg and Peter Page. Terry Polo, Sherry Sham, Hayden Beverly, uh, Noah uh, Centineo, David Lambert, Maya Mitchell, Danny Nuki, and Sierra Ramirez star. Joanna Johnson, uh, Greg Gu- Guli Lota, Elaine Goldsmith Thomas, and Benny Medina also serve as executive producers on the series produced by New Eureka Productions, Inc., in association with ABC Family. The third season of The Foster sees the family settling into a new dynamic. Uh, now that Kaylee is permanently adopted. Kaylee and Brandon share a significant secret, but focus on their interests to help them move on with their lives. A serious medical issue for Steph results in a clash of opinions between her wife, Lena, and her mother, Sharon. Jude must deal with his boyfriend's decision to move away, while Jesus and Marina are surprised with an old friend coming back. The Foster's returns Monday, January 25th at 9 p.m. on ABC Family. I don't like the back and forth scene with his predecessor, Stephen Colbert, is finding some particularly heated ratings com- competition with Jimmy Kimmel. The race for number two status behind late night king Jimmy Fallon has been tipping ever so slightly in Kimmel's favor for nearly a month now, with ABC's Jimmy Kimmel Live nabbing its third week on top of or tying Colbert's late show in a key demo. For the week of November 16th to the 20th, Kimmel averaged a .58 among adults 18 to 49. That puts him just a hair above Colbert's .56 rating. Tonight leads both shows handily with the 1.0 rating in the key demos. It also stood as Fallon's biggest margin of victory to date over Colbert, a whopping 79%. And speaking of closed margins, Seth Meyers continues to enjoy a very strong season of late night. At 12.35 a.m. with the inevitable Fallon lead-in, he took a .54 ratings in the key demo. Number two status for total viewers still belongs to Colbert. He beats Kimmel by more than 200,000 viewers for an average of 2.62 million uh, for the ninth week of the season. Fallon boasted 3.32 million viewers. These are all small wins for Kimmel's to be sure, but they're pretty significant considering how fresh Colbert's late show still is. In season to date, there would have to be a lot more movement for Kimmel to shrink the gap between number three and number two that the show currently has. Colbert is still outpacing Kimmel by 30%. Actress Holland Taylor has revealed she's in a loving relationship with the woman, but don't consider it a coming out for the 72-year-old. It's more of a clarification, she said. In an interview with New York radio station WNYC, Taylor says she's considering marriage to her younger female partner, a luxury she would never have previously humored at her age. Holland said of tying the knot, given my generation, it would not be something that would automatically occurred to me but she's mentioned it because just from a spiritual point of view from a heart point of view the two and a half men star and celebrated stage actress elaborated on privacy seeming uneasy with the modern celebrity culture that deems personal details she said it's awkward because if i talk about relationships in my life or people that have been in my life i'd like to be able to just say that without having to stop and say so you have come out no i haven't come out because i am out i live out taylor did touch on their difference in years however she said there's a very big age difference between us which i'm sure it shocks a lot of people and it startles me but as they say if she dies she dies taylor most recently starred in the acclaimed broadway production and she's attached to an upcoming project called Broken Heart M.O., which follows love stories across generations, co-starring Jenna Effman and Dylan Walsh. Taylor Swift made one fan's dream come true when she met 12-year-old Georgia Hope, who suffers from hearing loss while on tour in Sydney, Australia. Hope, who has progressive inner ear hearing loss, was able to meet with Swift backstage Saturday after her twin sister Chloe started a Facebook campaign and hashtag to Hashtag help Georgia meet Taylor Swift Sydney. The effort eventually caught the attention of Australian radio station Nova's 96.9, who helped Swift connect with the superfan who, upon learning that she would one day go deaf, was sad to hear that she won't be able to hear Taylor Swift. A post on the Facebook page, Chloe created red next to pictures of Georgia at the concert. It happened tonight. Georgia met Taylor. Chloe, you did it. Your sister, you gave your sister the ultimate gift. Taylor gave Georgia a massive hug. It, 
Um, Georgia later explained to Maitland Mercury that the pop star was very, very amazing and very pretty. I didn't expect it to be as tall as she was. This isn't the first time Swift has reached out to fans. In August, Swift met with young autistic musician Jacob Velasquez and invited the family of Ronan Thompson to see her give a rare performance of Ronan, a song dedicated to a boy who died of cancer at the age of four. Legendary singer Diana Ross invited her daughter, Blackish star Tracy Ellis Ross, on stage to perform the Billie Holiday classic Lady Sings the Blues. Tracy shared the epic moment on Facebook on Sunday along with how she felt when her mother called her name while performing inside the Venetian Theater in Las Vegas. Tracy wrote to her 1.2 million fan followers, Last week, my mom out of nowhere stopped her show and asked me to come on stage and sing. I think the last time my mom asked me to sing... I was five or six years old. I swear at first I thought she said Evan, my brother, a singer who was also there. But then I realized she said my name. And before I could think, I was walking towards the sage. Uh, She also continued about how nervous she was by saying there's something about singing. It's no joke trying to do that as the child of Diana Ross, let alone while standing by her side on stage. Plus, when you're nervous, it's hard to hear. It's hard to breathe and it's hard to be present. These are all important things when you are singing, she explained. Anyways, here it is, me stepping on stage with my mom, fighting through so many childhood fears and fantasies. However, the performance turned out great with the Ross family able to deliver a memorable tear-filled moment that brought the audience to their feet. Tracy concluded about the experience, it has been ages since I've hidden so deeply in my mother's embrace, and it was awesome. And now let's take a look at what happened on this date in entertainment history. On this date in 1940, the influential comedian and actor Richard Pryor, who rose to fame in Hollywood in the 1970s and appeared in such hits, films as Silver Streak is born in Peoria, Illinois. According to the Museum of Broadcast Communications, Pryor was the first African-American stand-up comedian to speak candidly and successfully to integrate audiences using the language and jokes blacks previously only shared among themselves when they were most critical of America. His comedic style emancipated African-American humor. After being expelled from school in the 8th grade, Pryor worked a series of jobs and served in the U.S. Army before he was discharged for getting into a fight. He began performing in comedy clubs and by 1963 was doing stand-up in New York City, modeling his routines after the clean-cut, non-offensive style of such fellow African-American comedians as Bill Cosby. The following year, Pryor made his national TV debut on a variety show hosted by Rudy Valley. In 1967, he released his first comedy album, Richard Pryor. The Funny Man made his big screen debut that same year in the in the comedy The Busy Body featuring Sid Caesar. During the 1970s, however, Pryor's comedy evolved and he tackled racially sensitive topics in his stand-up routines and best-selling Grammy award-winning comedy albums, often using raunchy political in- politically incorrect language. According to his 2005 obituary in the New York Times, at the height of his career in the late 1970s, Mr. Pryor prowled the stage like a re- re- restless cat, dispensing what critics regard as the most poignant and penetrating comedic view of African American life ever afforded to the American public. His he was volatile yet vulnerable, crass but sensitive, streetwise and cocky, but somehow still diffident and anxious, and he could unleash an astonishing array of dramatic and comedic skills to win acceptance and approval for a kind of stark humor. Pryor's movie career took off with the 1976 box office hit Silver Streak, a comedy thriller about a murder on a train co-starring Gene Wilder. Pryor and Wilder went on to collaborate on such films as Stir Crazy in 1980, See No Evil, Hear No Evil in 1989, and Another You in 1991. During the 1970s, Pryor also appeared in such movies as 1977's Grease Lightning, in which he plays a race car driver, The Wiz in 1978, a version of The Wizard of Oz that featured an entirely African-American American cast with Diana Ross and Michael Jackson joining Pryor, who played the title role. Writer Neil Simon's California Suite in 1978 with Alan Alda, Jane Fonda, Walter Matthau, Maggie Smith, and Bill Cosby, and The Muppet Movie in 1979. In 1979, Pryor also released his first concert film, Richard Pryor Live in Concert, which according to a 2005 Times article, remains the standard by which other movies of live comedy performances are judged. In 1980, Pryor, who battled substance abuse issues during his life, was severely burned in an explosion caused while he was freebasing cocaine. 
After spending several months recovering in the hospital, he resumed his career and performed stand-up and appeared in a strong in a string of movies, including Busting Loose in 1980, in which he played an S. Con who gets a second chance, Superman 3 in 1983 with Christopher Reeves, Brewster's Millions in 1985 with John Candy, the semi-autobiographical JoJo Dancer, Your Life is Calling in 1986, and Harlem Nights in 1989, written, directed by, and co-starring Eddie Murphy. In 1986, Pryor was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. He made his final film in David Lynch's Lost Highway in 1997. Pryor, who was married six times, died at the age of 65 on December 18, 2005 in California after suffering a heart attack. And that is your entertainment report for Tuesday, December 1st, 2015. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at the Enter report or on Instagram at the entertainment report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of the entertainment report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeartRadio iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app. Search for the Entertainment Report and it'll take you to the page. Good night and God bless you all.